Guys, what's going on, man? Welcome back to another episode of the Arsenio Buck Show. And you know what, man? I'm just going to sum up the last two days in general. I might be able to do a ramble of positivity on the last day, perhaps at the airport. It just all depends. But you know what's the evening before I go. Um, I'm not going to say this entire trip has been hampered or are hindered by the fact that the weather has been ridiculously bad. But you know what? I told myself, I said, you know what, as long as it's not like crazy ass heavy rate or category four or category five or any kind of crazy ass weather, I'm going to be able to say I'm going to be able to get through this. So I'm lucky enough that on the first day we went to Langbiang. Okay, not too much rain, a little bit of rain in the morning, and it was all right for the duration of the day. What's all that noise? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, interest in fire alarms. Anyways, and so the second day was a little bit crazy, and this is what I'm going to talk about. It's the waterfall. So, again, guys, on the second day, oh, my God, what did I end up doing? Ah, uh, that's right. Okay. So the second day, I ended up getting, like, hot chocolate uh, with one of my friends, and before that, we had some breakfast. Now, what was the breakfast? The thing is, again, you guys already know the diet out here. It's primarily, uh, you know, Vietnamese uh, so, obviously Vietnamese, but the carbohydrates, they eat a lot of noodles. It could be thin noodles, thick noodles, stuff like that, and just a little bit of meat, protein. Now, remember what I said before. It's I'm coming from a diet where, you know, in the morning, I have my, you know, my chicken, I have my rice, I have this, I have that, and it's very, very easy for me to, uh, you know, to end up, what is it? What am I trying to say here? Oh, my God. I'm just losing my mind. Uh, it's very easy for me to get full very, you know, easily. But here, man, like after one hour, I'm already a little bit hungry. So then I'm like, man, I need food. I need meat to eat. So let me give you an example. When I come back on Thursday, right, or when I actually go back to work on Thursday, after I finish working out at, uh, what is that, at 745 in the morning, I'm going to be able to go to, uh, what is it, I'm going to go to... Uh, I already have my breakfast prepared. So I have my banana, I have my yogurt, I have my rice, I have this, I have that, I might have eggs and stuff like that. That's a full breakfast for me. And so after that, again, the American breakfast, it's supposed to be cold. That's what we were taught to, you know, believe that American breakfast is cold, but it's actually unhealthy and it's not considered breakfast. Although, of course, me growing up, that's what it was. But, you know, going back to Thailand, after that, I would pick up a salad. So I could go uh, pick up a salad, then I could go back home, then I could get another rice thing, or I could get a tuna sandwich. And then, of course, I, working at a company in the evening, they supply me with a full course dinner. It could be a soup thing with chicken, but there's always a good, a fair amount of protein that's involved. Here in Vietnam, there isn't. So it's very difficult because in saying that and in going forward, Am I, if I do end up potentially moving to Vietnam uh, for whatever reason or for all the reasons in the world uh, next year, because obviously, man, you know, living in this cold, you know, these cold temperatures, man, it's just so cozy, you know, and that's why there are coffees and cafes and everything all over the place, because it's just magnificent being in this type of environment. I just love it so much. And so, um, yeah, going forward, um. What is it? We ended up going to the hot chocolate place, and then this song was played, oh my god, called Jeremy Passion. I don't know who he is. I think he's like an underground singer or whatnot, but I love it because these two Vietnamese girls, they were at the coffee shop, which is connected to a hostel, and they start playing this music, and I'm like, dude, this music's got some good beat to it, man. What is this song? So I ended up getting, you know, some of the songs off, um... Uh, you know, some of the songs off the, the iPhone that they had in there. And then from there, we went to the waterfall. So, of course, I was accompanied by my friend, good old Anna, or Anna, when, that's right, Vietnamese. And we went to the waterfall. But the thing is, there was a lot of rainfall, and it got even worse when we were very, very close. Now, guys, keep in mind, the waterfall isn't like 5,600 meters or 5,600 kilometers away. It's only about three to four miles away from the city center where we're at right now. This is what's so beautiful about Dalat. You know the big mountain, Lang Biang? Dude, that's only like eight kilometers away. You can literally run there, right? That, that's basically a run for me. And so 
This is what's so beautiful about this city is because everything is nearby and it's right on top of us. So going to this waterfall, there's another beautiful lake and a couple of other things. And then we just realized that there was a cable car just going right over our heads. Uh, We didn't realize that until today. But nonetheless, the waterfall, it was great. It's not even that much of a hike. You could go down in probably about 20 minutes or so. Hell, I ran down in about five minutes, probably not even five minutes, maybe about three and a half minutes because we had left the goddamn, uh, what is it, the helmets at the bottom. So when you get to the bottom, you have this gorgeous waterfall, serenity. You have the people around there. But what irritated me just a bit was somebody threw a bottle of water very, very close to the goddamn river. I'm like, guys, there's a container 10 meters away from here. So I went down. I told my friend, hey, hold my phone. I went down, grabbed the water bottle, and I threw it in the goddamn trash can. And I'm like, come on, guys. God damn it. All this nasty ass. You guys hear about this plastic pandemic? It's everywhere. Just do a good deed and run. And you know what? We already know what type of people those were. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Chinese. But, you know, I ain't trying to, you know, point any fingers or anything. But God damn, man. Y'all, y'all just, I know y'all don't give a motherfuck about the environment. And unfortunately, I love my folks out there in India. You guys listen to my podcast. But we know those plastic ass lakes. And, you know, you guys taking baths and stuff and all that craziness. We know what's going on out there. I'm, aware, I'm well aware of what the fuck is going on around here. Y'all need to cut this bullshit out. There's just far too much plastic for you to just, yo dumbass, to just throw a bottle, which is 10 meters away from a recycling bin. It's pathetic. And whoever allowed that behavior, they're pathetic. And their parents are pathetic. So cut the shit. I had to pick up another bottle right after that because someone just so happened to throw it on the ground. Yes, in Thailand. Do I do that? Somewhat. But I don't litter the because well, because Thailand's filth, okay. Let's be honest, okay. So it's really filthy out there, but you know, I you know, throwing it, you know, on the uh, on the concrete or on the pavement or in a, in a in a river that's already filled with plastic, I get it, I get it, but you know what? Not in a foresty, gorgeous place like Dalat is. Y'all need to cut that motherfucking shit out. All right, now let's get back to the good. <gasps> that waterfall was just, it was right on, it was just right there. You guys can actually see the Instagram video. And I was just being grateful because I just envisioned myself and I started getting goosebumps just sitting right underneath that waterfall with that water falling right on top of my head and me just being grateful and in the moment saying, thank you for this gorgeous water that's falling right on top of me. Oh my God, one of the greatest moments ever. And so the water, of course, went from that waterfall going right underneath the, uh, right underneath us at the little bridge, curving out to the right side, and then going to the other place, which I'm going to actually post in another video. Um, but yeah, man, the little restaurant and a couple of car- – well, there are a couple of things, little artifacts that you could buy. And, of course, Vietnamese people were very, very cool there. I'm very amazed that some of these people could speak English. I just felt – I just feel like, you know, out here in Dalat, man, you just don't get that many English speakers in general. But – I'm amazed, man, because on that same day, after going to that waterfall, we ended up going to a Big C. Big C is like a supermarket. It's like the Big K, the Walmart out there in America. It's like Woolworths or Coles out there in America. I mean, I'm sorry, Australia. Same as England. And, you know, this lady was just speaking to me. This little girl. Well, I wouldn't say little girl. She's a worker there, but she's about 20 years old. Just speaking to me in English. No problem. And I was like, oh, my God, you speak English. Yay. You know what I mean? She's like, hey, have a good day. I was like, oh, my God. I haven't heard anyone say have a good day in six and a half years in Thailand. (laughs) Anyways, so guys, man, it was just wonderful. And that's what I loved so much because, you know, after the waterfall, honestly, it was just frigid outside. It was ridiculously cold. We couldn't do anything. Um, It was just raining. So I just ended up just tucking away and just staying in my hotel and just calling it a night. Um, You know, but of course, on this day, today, well, today you guys are listening to it in a little bit of an advance, you know, probably about 12 hours in advance. Um, but, you know, we ended up, uh, you know, just going to a cafe and I ended up seeing a couple of other people and whatnot. So, you know, today was a nice relaxing day. You don't want to do too much before the last day. So, of course, with me just bringing a carry on and, of course, the airport being as small as it is out here, uh, it's very easy to just go right through immigration, da 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 and just sit down and just chill and just, you know, hammer it out on blogs for about an hour. So, again, guys, man, it's just 
what can I rate this trip? And I think I'm going to do that in probably a Facebook Live if I actually get a chance or in the next podcast. But I'm going to rate the entire entire trip if I can in the next podcast or in the next Facebook Live or the Instagram Live or Instagram in general or the Instagram TV, of course. So if you guys are interested in that, you guys go on and tune on in over there. And if I do it on Instagram TV, maybe I'll be able to upload it in podcast form a day later. But guys, just... Just life changing because I be- I just realized that there's still too much world out there where you're treated properly, you're treated you're treated with love, rather than just living in a egregious country where you know people look at you bad, people you know grab their purses when they walk by you. Um, they're just ignorant to life, but Vietnam isn't, and I wonder why that is. There aren't that many foreigners here. You know, the only two foreigners I saw were Vietnamese women. That was the old guy. Of course, we already know that story. And then there was another um, another girl with some kind of high school guy. Yeah, I think it was just like, you, you know, he's probably paying her. But um, you, you don't see – well, again, this is Dalat, guys. Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi is far worse. I would not live there whatsoever. No way, no how. But if I have the opportunity to live here in Dalat, I have to figure out, yes, a routine – uh, food, especially, I'll have to buy all the vegetables, get the chicken, and like have like some kind of rice cooking because I'm a rice lover now. Um, and that will be my, you know, my meals and stuff like that. And again, they don't have burgers, they don't have the variety of food that Thailand has, but they also don't accept filth as, you know, an option. So filth, you guys are like, damn filth. Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't see one cockroach while I've been out here. Not in my hotel. Not on the streets. Not anywhere I've ate. Uh, not anywhere I've eaten. But in Thailand, they tolerate that shit. You can't tolerate filth. And I just think that maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. Maybe the time is up. Just maybe. Because, again, yes, I have the projects. I have all those great things that are happening. But once I start making three to probably 6000 US dollars online per month, uh, that's it. That's probably going to be it. Now, I would love to do presentations and other, thing in, other things in Bangkok. I'm all for that. But <sighs> in terms of living... I think I'm probably about a year away, a year away from a departure. And you guys are saying, well, where are you going to go next? Well, Dalat is a place that I would love to expand because people are eager to learn here. And I think the potential and the warmness in the hearts of the people here is very big. Another place would be Da Nang, which is just north of here. So those questions are going to be answered coming up in probably a year's time because I do believe – you know, living in Thailand, making that same bullshit wage and even being underpaid in different places and over here and over there. I think it's just time for me to step on out of there. So with that being said, guys, just a remarkable trip in general, life changing trip, because now I'm going to have that feeling while I'm at the airport. When I land back in Thailand, I'm like, oh, now I got to get back to being an asshole. Some people will say, no, you don't have to be that way. No, 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 no. Six and a half years in Thailand, racial discrimination on all levels. Yeah, I kind of, I'm, but the thing is, do not become your environment. Create your own environment within you. Because again, there are some people that hold doors open. There are some people that just so happen to smile. But it comes probably once every six to, six to 12 months. Here in Vietnam, I could walk right outside my hotel and then there it is. So I think time's up, and guys, stay tuned for more. But, man, thank you so much for tuning in to all these traveling podcasts. I've been on fire, and I can't thank you guys enough for the support and the listening. So, guys, just stay tuned for more, and I'm so grateful for all of you. And as always, man, I'm your host, over and out.